everyone and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to start today off by doing a mom video, answering questions about being a mom. I know a lot of us YouTubers can relate to this because I'm pretty sure a good bit of us are mothers or we have mothers. So I wanted to start off today by doing a little question and answer about being a mom. For those of you that don't know, I have three children. They are seven, five, and three, two girls and a boy. The boy's the youngest. So this is going to be fun today, answering some questions. So I have the questions on my phone. I'm going to be looking down and reading them. Let's get started. Okay, so what is the best thing about being a mother? And I know it's probably going to sound cliche, but I would say the best thing about being a mother is the unconditional love and having like that support system with you all the time. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and while it is stressful to have all three of them at home all day, every day, I don't know that I would ever change that because, like, it's really comforting at times to know that I'm constantly with somebody, and, I mean, yes, I like having my alone time at times, but I feel like when my kids are grown up and they're moving out of the house, which I hate even thinking about that, I feel like I'm going to be really lonely, and so... The best thing about being a mom is just being able to take that in right now. I'm loving it and I don't want to be lonely. <laughs> I love having them. I love their love. And so I would th say that's my favorite part about being a mother. What's your favorite part about being a mother? Second, how do you feel about your children's birthdays? I love my kids' birthdays. I always said when we got pregnant with each of them that that was like one of my favorite parts about getting pregnant was you did not know when their birthday was going to be. It was this huge surprise. So not only were you getting to meet your child for the first time, but you got to have that like surprise gift of figuring out when their birthday is going to be. And our oldest was born on March 31st. And I love that because I'm a March baby and I like getting to share that with her. And plus, if you know me, I hate hate the heat I hate it <laughs> I hate it I would rather have like that 60 to 70 degree weather any day and and sacrifice going to a pool than to have 95 degree weather I hate it <laughs> so I was pregnant for her the entire winter and it was 22 degrees and snowing out when I had her it was perfect absolutely perfect I loved her birthday the second is May 2nd and I love that too because my grandpa's birthday is May 4th and I think there's like 81 years between them and so I I love that they get to share that every year you know he gets to say you know like he, that he's 81 years older than her and how he remembers her birthday and it's just a really cool thing for them to be able to share that plus like I said I was pregnant with her during the cooler months I I think it was only like 56 degrees when I had her and so it was still cool out it was really nice then there's baby number three and his is like a bittersweet thing because I had him in October. His birthday is October 23rd. I was pregnant all summer long. So if you know me and I hate the heat, plus being pregnant in the heat, not cool. But I am obsessed with all things fall and Halloween. If you know me, you know Halloween is my favorite holiday. I love Hocus Pocus. I love trick-or-treating. I love cornfields. I love it all. So to find out that I was due with a baby on October 29th, two days before Halloween was incredible. So I ended up having him on October 23rd. But fun fact, I had all three of my children on a Thursday, which makes their birthdays even cooler because I don't know, just something about Thursdays in our family. I don't know if it's our lucky day or what, but I had them all on Thursdays. So that's pretty cool too. Okay. At what age did you get pregnant for the first time? I got pregnant with the first one July, 2010. So I was 23 when I got pregnant with Taylor and I had her just after I turned 24 and with Quinn I got pregnant September 2012 so I was 25 when I got pregnant with Quinn and I had her at 26 and then Lucas was I got pregnant in February 2014 so I was still 26 yes I was still 26 and I had him at 27 so in your opinion, are you a good wife or a better mother? Oh, I try to be both, honestly. I try to balance both. I try to 
do as much as I can for my husband through the day and like that includes like through the day like I try and take like an hour and like make breakfast for him in the morning because he gets up at 2.30 in the morning for work so I try and like make breakfast and have it prepped so he can warm it up before he leaves for work try to prep like getting a lunch together for him to have for work um, set the coffee pot get all his work clothes laid out if they need iron figure that whole thing out um, get just get all of his laundry done like I try to take an hour or two a day and focus on being a wife and making sure that he's taken care of before he gets home and then I focus the rest of the day on being a mother and getting crafts out trying to have some teaching exercises trying to do some fun things get them outside but I try to do a balance of both which could be why <laughs> I get stressed out really easily but I try to do a balance of both I try to be a good wife and a good mother and I really fail some days at it just because I let stress get to me too much but we're working on that but I try really hard to be a good wife and a good mother hopefully they think that I do good at that I try really hard to which child of yours resembles you the least if you know my children you know that Taylor and Lucas my first and third look exactly like me they both have brown eyes we resemble each other really well and then the middle child is Quinn and she resembles my husband's side of the family more her and her cousin they are both blonde haired blue eyed she definitely takes on his side of the family so I would say Taylor and Lucas resemble me the most tell one habit of your of each of your children that you really admire Taylor I admire her perseverance if you know me at all you know that Taylor has nonverbal autism and that can be really devastating some days because it really holds her back at times from being able to probably do the things that she wants to do like for instance we're in the middle of summer right now obviously and the heat and the sun is a lot for her at times with sensory issues so she won't go outside even though I can even though she sits at the window and it's heartbreaking and she watches the kids play outside but she physically physically cannot get herself to go outside because of these sensory, sensory issues which we're working on but it's heartbreaking however her perseverance still she's so still so happy and so loving and she is a fighter and I love that in her she's very stubborn and although that is frustrating at times I love that quality in her because I know that it's going to continue to make her a fighter as she gets older Quinn Quinn has one of the softest hearts that you will ever meet I mean she drives me not some days <laughs> but she has such a sweet giving spirit and she's always always been about praying and I love that about her like we wanted to go yard sailing a few weeks ago and I could hear her in the backseat praying that it wouldn't rain so we could go yard sailing and she just she just has such a compassionate spirit she loves everybody if somebody's getting made fun of at school or she sees somebody getting picked on she immediately takes control she's a huge mother hen and I love that quality in her and I hope that she never ever ever loses that I hope she always stays being a compassionate loving person and Lucas <laughs> Lucas is that third child and he's a boy he is fearless and while it is going to literally cover my head in gray hairs one day I hope he never loses it because he literally does not back down from anything and I really want him to take that attitude further in life and really develop something amazing out of it but I love that about him because I would say I'm the exact opposite of that I'm fearful but I love that he's fearless and I hope that he never ever ever loses that quality I admire it in him what three habits every mother should acquire? I would say the first is make sure that you are getting some me time. Whether it is setting your alarm clock for a half hour before your children wake up, or it is staying up a little later after your children, or it is getting a babysitter one night a week so that you can go out and breathe, get me time. It is not selfish, not selfish at all to have a little bit of time that is for you. Because if you don't, you're going to start breaking down mentally. I promise you. I try every morning to, I even though it's summer, I try every morning to get up at least a half hour before the kids and sit down at the, sit down at the um, kitchen table, read my Bible, listen to worship music, drink a cup of coffee, pray, 
really just breathe and just be alone for a little bit. There is nothing selfish about that. And my husband and I, we have a date night every Tuesday night. My parents will watch the kids for two hours for us every Tuesday night. And just for us to reconnect, you can lose yourself in parenting. I promise you, take some time for you. Take some time for your husband. Second, don't sweat the small stuff. Seriously, pick your battles. If you are going to get upset about every little thing that happens through the day, you are going to lose your mind. Don't get so amped up about little things. Brush them off your shoulders, who cares? If your kid is not bleeding from his nose and it's not stopping after like four hours, don't worry about it. If your kid does not have a chainsaw outside chopping down a tree, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't sweat the small stuff. And number three, I would have to say is learn patience. And that is a really hard thing. But when we act as parents and mothers like this, when we let little things or even big things, if we let them get to us and we don't think before we're acting, we can turn into somebody that we don't even know. So one thing I would definitely recommend is patience. Breathe. You see something happening? Don't react initially take a second refocus think about your how you're going to handle the situation think about how you're going to discipline think about how you're going to talk to your child don't react initially that's my that would be my last piece of advice for any mother out there share two lessons that your children have taught you one is my children uh, like most of you know i struggle with anxiety and hypochondria and things like that and it really can get you down some days. You really feel like you are less of a human being and that can be really frustrating at times because who wants to feel like less of a human? But my children have taught me that who cares what you struggle with? You are still a person and they still love you no matter what. They love me on the days that I don't feel like getting out of bed and they love me on the days when I'm a super cool, awesome mom that takes them to work. They love me both days. And they wouldn't have me any other way. And I love hearing that. I love having them come in and cuddle me and tell me how much they love me. And just, they love you regardless. And I think it's a lesson that all of us could take into the world. Is love everyone. No matter what they're going through. Or whether they're at their worst or they're at their best. They still deserve love and compassion. And that's one thing that my, my, that my children have definitely taught me. And number two, my children have really encouraged me and honestly them to really sit down and figure out who I am as a person, what kind of traits I want to pass along to them, what kind of parents I want them to be because who I am as, am as a parent is who they could potentially become as a parent. You know, they're watching that example and they're taking those traits. What do I want them to be? to my grandchildren. And that's something that I'm constantly thinking about. I know they're only seven, five, and three, but that's something that I'm constantly thinking about is what kind of traits do I want them to have as a parent? And am I showing them? Do I want them to be screaming and yelling and zero patience and zero love and zero faith? Or do I want them to be slow to speak and loving and taking and just being compassionate and loving people at their worst. That's who I want them to be. And I that's all I can keep praying is that God helps me be that person for them. That's something that they've really taught me is who I want to be as a parent and who I want them to be as teenagers and adults. So that was our mom question and answer session. I would love to hear your comments, what your thoughts are, what your opinions are. If you're a YouTuber, let's see a video. Mom question and answer. I'd love to see it. I appreciate all of you. If you're enjoying these videos, give a thumbs up, subscribe. I would love to welcome you to our family. And if you're in for that craziness and would love to hear your comments, I love having conversations. Like I said, I'm a stay at home mom. I love social interaction. So get to me in the comments, subscribe, like, and let me know if there's any other kind of videos that you would like to see in the future. Thanks guys.